Recently, I've been getting a lot of messages from people with these, um, I kind of call them the they conspiracy. You know, the ones who take no responsibility for themselves and they blame everybody else for deceiving them. They've been lying to me all along. The Luciferians. First of all, the word says you're handed over to delusion and deception when you have not loved truth. I don't see how God could deal with me in a particular way when I have been upset that I was deceived and took it back to him. And he said, well, why didn't you go to my word to begin with? I don't see how God would handle me that way and not handle you that way. They didn't deceive you. You deceived yourself because you did not love truth. And so you were handed over to deception. And if you don't take responsibility for that, then it's going to happen to you over and over and over. And these are the very people who will also come on this channel and they'll hear everything that I say. And a lot of times they'll receive it all and they'll be like, I've waited my whole life for this. And then I say one thing they don't like. And instead of taking it up with God, they get upset with me. They get angry with me because I said something they don't like, even though I'm speaking on the word of God. And it's because they don't take any responsibility for themselves. They are still perpetuating lies that they've heard in sermons, lies that they've heard on YouTube by other conspiracy theorists who do not take personal responsibility and blame everybody else for their deception. I'm here to tell you that if you don't take personal responsibility for loving truth and for seeking truth in the word of God, you will not be saved. There's no possible way that you could because God said it says people perish because they did not love truth. People perish for lack of knowledge because they did not love truth. There's a couple things that I was confronted with like in the last couple weeks uh, by people in different messages. And so I want to address them in this video because obviously the devil has something he's trying to uh, bring at me. And God, who's sovereign, because the devil's not sovereign, wants me to consider these things so that I can edify the church. So one is, and this, this has come up repeatedly, is Luciferian. Like, what the heck is that? Is that somehow like more esteemable than satanic? What is Luciferian? Where does this term even come from? Honestly, I don't hear anyone who actually reads the word of God use that term. So it's coming from somewhere. I don't know who coined that term, but I don't see it in the word. I mean, in the Bible, I hear mostly the name Satan and the word demonic. Luciferian makes it sound, sound like... You're trying to legitimize his kingdom, like his kingdom has some sort of power. His kingdom doesn't have any power, but the power you give his kingdom. That would not be a term that I would be using based on like reading the Bible. So I hope that if you're using that, that you'll consider like, where did I get this term from? Because I have a sneaking suspicion that it's associated with doctrines that are not actually in the Bible. The second thing someone tried to convince me of is that the world is flat and it's not round and whatever else. I mean, that could be true. Because I see, you know, there are certain things in the Bible that, where, that could indicate that. And also, why should I care? I want to know why I should care. If you can tell me why I should care, because God's not putting this on my heart. If you can tell me why that should be important to me in terms of the doctrine that God has established and how that has led me away from truth, then I will consider it. But the weird thing is, like, people get so caught up in this, and then they're like, they've been lying to us. Whoever they are, they don't have any power over you. God's the only one who has power. Return to his word, then you'll know truth. But people get so caught up in this, like, martyrdom of deception, and they aren't even reading the word that says you're deceived when you don't love truth. Frankly, I don't care whether, whether the world is, a, you know, a square, a triangle, round, or flat. I don't care unless God makes me care and he hasn't really made me care yet. So if you're presenting something to me, which is someone was doing, presenting their case to me, I don't care for the fact that someone out there told me a lie. That's not the reason I care. The only reason I care is how has this distorted the word of God and why does it need to be cleaned up in order for me to understand my covenant and fulfill it to please God? Let me give you an example. Easter. Easter and Passover. I confronted my childhood bishop recently about why he is teaching Easter instead of God's Passover. Yeah, that's a big deal. So if I present that to him, I'm going to let him know. These are the reasons why this is important. And as a matter of fact, he said to me, well, who cares what we call it? God cares. First of all, God cares. Second of all, God's Passover has nothing to do with a bunny laying eggs. 
but Easter does. God's Passover has nothing to do with a pagan holiday lifted up to Ishtar. God's Passover is commanded to be celebrated in a very specific way. God's Passover is eight days, not one. And God's Passover helps us to understand that by the blood of the lamb, we are passed over. Yeah, you don't get that from Easter. Tell me why I should care whether the world is flat or round. I'm not disputing if that's what the, if that is the fact that the world is flat, tell me why it matters to you that you're on a crusade to convince me of your argument. Because otherwise, I don't care. Otherwise, I'm just going to see that you're blaming everybody else because they deceived you, and I'm going to think you're unstable. That's, that's on the honest truth. I'm going to think that you're unstable and that you need something to focus on to fulfill your empty life. I'm not going to take you seriously. I'm here focused on God's word in order to edify the church. So if you're not building up the church and you're not edifying and you just want to argue stupid arguments, I don't care. Like I'm not going to engage in that. That is more Luciferian to use their term than anything. I mean, to me, that's satanic. It distracts away from the meat and potatoes, what is important to God and the covenant. As of right now, I don't think that I'm going to be more saved or that knowing that the world is flat versus round is going to save me or how it helps me to obey God better or anything else. Tell me why I should care, then, I'll, then I will investigate with you. Tell me why it's important to you or is this just some weird tangent and cause that you're trying to execute? Because if that's it, like I'm, I don't want to go for that ride. The third thing is most important to me, and this has to do with the Trinity doctrine. I've had people contact me repeatedly telling me that the Trinity doctrine is false. I completely agree with you. I don't see Trinity in the Bible. That's Catholic. I can jive with that. Like, like I, I believe that. But what they're saying, actually, is that there are not three persons in God, and they're wrong. They're flat out wrong. Nor do they ever back it up with scripture. There are three persons in in God, there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it would just say God. Why is God being separated out into these three persons or aspects of God? Because they are all one God. Just like when you see the creatures and they have in, in Revelation, and those creatures have four faces. Same creature, four faces. Ox, eagle, man, and lion. And those represent different aspects of the creatures. And those creatures come from God. They represent different aspects of God. We have a three-person God. And God himself has identified those three persons as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father has ultimate authority. And we know that because Jesus said he does nothing and says nothing that he has not heard from the Father, that he does not act on his own authority, he does not speak on his own authority, but receives from the Father. He always shepherded us back to the Father, just as we are supposed to shepherd back to him. Jesus said that when the gift of the Holy Spirit comes, that it will come from the Father, but that Holy Spirit is not going to do anything on his own authority, but will receive from Jesus. So if Jesus receives from the Father and the Holy Spirit receives from Jesus, then there's an authority hierarchy within this God. They're all equal in value. They're all God. But there is an authority hierarchy and the Father had to give authority to Jesus. Or I should say, chose to give authority to Jesus, but it had to come from the Father. The plan was made by the Father. Jesus executed the plan. He created based on the Father. These things are clear in Scripture. Why are unstable people distorting this? To call it Trinity is wrong. For sure it's wrong. But it, just because you have a resentment against the Catholic Church does not mean that I'm going to accept your distortion of doctrine. That's not my problem. That's your problem to sort through. I'm not going to call it Trinity. I'm going to speak on the authority of the Word and the one who sent me, I'm going to understand that he has indeed established authority, even in a marriage, saying that the husband is the head and the wife is the body, but both are equal in value. 
And the same thing goes with our God. I'm not deluded. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not deluded. Because I don't go around listening to other people's teachings. I don't get confused because I'm eating defiled food. You know what happens if you eat, like, if you eat bad food, but you also eat, like, fresh food with it? Like, you have a plate of, like, something that's rotten, but the rest of it's fresh. You still get sick. You're still going to barf and have problems with your stomach. God says that the 144,000 are pure. They're virgins. They remain pure and there is not a lie in their mouths and they did not defile themselves with women. Women in the Bible represent counterfeit churches, multiple women. There's only one woman that is pure, that is Zion, that is God's church. Multiple women represent false churches. You can't defile yourself with all of that stuff because then you end up with that little bit of leaven that rises the whole lump and the lenses by which you can see are completely clouded and you become confused. There was a time when I was doing that too and I became confused. But I have to tell you, the reason I speak with the conviction and the clarity that I speak with is because I don't defile myself. I go to the word and I go to his spirit and that's all I need. I truly believe and know that God is enough and that anything that I pray for in his name, when I sit down and I say, Lord, okay, give me wisdom. Help me to understand what you want me to understand today. He comes through every single time. Why? Because he promises me that he will and because I believe and I'm not... A, a, I'm not a wave swayed by the wind, tossed to and fro by the wind. I'm not unstable. I'm clear. I'm solid in him. I can speak to you with conviction. I can speak to you with clarity and I can speak to you based on his word. I'm not all convoluted up with a bunch of false teachings. I've received that cleansing by God. He is able to make me stand. But see, I have to believe that too. And there was a time when he was teaching me to stay with his word and his spirit. And I got scared and I would think, oh, I, I can't do this. I don't have a theology degree. And you know what I've come to understand? Those who have theology degrees are more confused than anyone because they were required to ingest so much counterfeit Christianity through sermons and commentaries. They weren't reading just the word of God. And what does God say? My children perish for lack of knowledge because they do not love truth. If you had just stayed with the word of God, if I had just stayed with the word of God, if, if we eliminated these institutions that are creating children of Satan, false teachers, so that they can capitalize because you can't, I mean, how much are you going to charge for having someone read the Bible? No, they charge for many books and an education that they pitch to you that is so important that you must, must have. And then the entire world goes, ooh, look at their credentials. They must know something because they read a lot of books. Guess what? The Bible says that you are ever learning but never coming to understanding. You, you gather so many books, but you have no truth. There's only one place that you need truth, and it's in him. And his word is him. And if you deviate from that, even just the slightest to the left or the slightest to the right, you're going to become confused. The word is clear. There's a father. He has ultimate authority. There's a son who operates in the will of the father. He executes the plan of the father. He's been given authority by the father. He is a sacrifice to the father. There's a Holy Spirit that could only come after Jesus was glorified. That Holy Spirit came from the father. It's a gift from the father. And that Holy Spirit is receiving from Christ. If the authority of the Father is greater than the Son and the Holy Spirit is equivalent to the Father, how could that be so? It's without understanding. And so what's happening in this, in this uh, you know, claimed, oh, Trinity is Luciferian, guess what? It's satanic to eliminate the Holy Spirit. That's satanic as well, to eliminate the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Why didn't he say whoever blasph blasphemes against the Father? Is he inherently saying whoever blasphemes against the Father? No. There's separate language for the Holy Spirit and the Father. The Holy Spirit is the Ruach HaKodesh. The Father is Patea. In Greek and in Hebrew is have. So we're not even using the same words to describe these aspects of God, these persons of God. So here's the thing is that when people are doing this and I'm not feeling from the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm feeling, okay, this is not something that God is convicting me of. So plead your case. Tell me, why is this so bothersome to you? 
And I'm willing to engage in the dialogue. And I've, I've said to these people, I agree with you. Trinity doctrine is not correct. Um, Trinity is not in the Bible, but here's what we do know about this three person God. And then I'm telling them the scriptures and they're not responding to those scriptures, but they continue on with their rant about how, you know, about how they have deceived us, you know, again, with that lack of accountability, you know, speak on the, on the authority of God. I don't need to sort through your resentment. When people are doing that, I don't take them seriously because I know that the agenda is for something else. It's really not about truth. If you, if I'm speaking from the word and you can't hear truth, then something's going on. But see, the reason why the Lord allows this to happen or even sends people to speak these things is for his glory. Frankly, it's not about anything else. It's not about me being right and them being wrong or vice versa. It's for his glory to clear up false doctrine. Because when I come across it, I'm going to do a video about it. I'm going to expose what's going on. I'm going to expose what's being said. And at a certain point, when you hear me exposing these things and you go back to scripture and you look this up and you see that you've been hearing these things on other channels and from other teachers and you've been, ex you've been you know, deceived, you need to pay attention to why it is you've been deceived. So if you keep listening to these people, you keep gathering around yourself many teachers and you don't correct yourself. At some point, your lampstand is going to be taken away. You realize that, right? That's what we're told in Revelation. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught the Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, so they ate food sacrificed to idols. What's food sacrificed to idols? Doctrine, sacrament taught by demons, and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you also hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you. And will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Guess what? When he fights against you with the sword of his mouth, you will be slain by that sword. That's what he does to people who are dying, who are not going up in that resurrection, and who are condemned. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Again, doctrines taught by demons. And in verse 23, he says, I will strike her children dead. Well, who do you think her children are? Those who listen to her and follow false teachings. Now listen to Ezekiel 13, verse 17. Now, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination. Prophesy against them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on all their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads in order to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? You've profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread by lying to my people who listen to lies. By lying to my people. No one can lie to you unless you listen to their lies. By lying to my people who listen to lies, you have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not live. The false teachers and the false prophets are going to die and so are the people who listen to them. You understand that? Please understand that very clearly. It's not a small thing. You don't get to turn and say, they deceived me. They lied to me. You don't get to say that. That's not going to justify you in the end. You will be held accountable for the people you listen to, whether or not you discerned if they're shepherds of God. That's why I'm being so adamant about this in this video. It's ridiculous and, and childish for people to say stuff like that. They've been lying to us. Go search truth for yourself. You're not entitled to anything. Someone's supposed to spoon feed you. You listen to someone, you go back and pray and ask God, are they of you or not? Should I be listening to them or not? You familiarize yourself with scripture. You don't get to go around saying these things. You can't blame other people. Jesus in Revelation holds everyone accountable saying, come out of Babylon. Babylon, all of counterfeit Christianity. Remember the Babylon, the great is Catholicism. That's what started counterfeit Christianity. But Babylon altogether is all of false religion. Everything that came out of that harlot, all of false religion, that's Babylon. And he doesn't say, well, release my people, Babylon. No, he established Babylon in order to test your heart. Do you love him or not? You come out of Babylon. And he says, come out of her, my people, or you're going to bear in her plagues 
for her sins are piled up to heaven. He doesn't say, come out of her, but when I come, I'll listen to your excuses. I'll listen to you cry and whine and tell me how she deceived you. He doesn't say that. He holds us accountable. So no more of this. No more of this nonsense of they deceived me, the they doctrine. You are going to live or die by what you do in your heart. If what you're doing is ingesting falsehood and you're not discerning with God, you're not going back to him and making him your number one, that's on you. That's what you've chosen. You have husbands or wives who do the same thing and you don't say anything to them. You are not going to be off the hook. Their blood will be on your head. You have a spouse who's listening to falsehood. You better wake up. Because you have a covenant that you're not fulfilling. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Your deeds are not finished in the sight of God. You better choose whether you're hot or cold because he's about to spit you out of his mouth. Please discern this message with God.